Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here, and today we're gonna be talking about five mistakes you're making in Civ 6 and how to quickly fix them to win faster, easier games. I mean, you're never gonna look as good as this girl does while skateboarding, but we'll have you playing your favorite game more efficiently in no time at all. Before we get started here, you should take a quick second to like the video. This way, you train YouTube to let it know you like watching content about the games you play and you definitely want to get better at them faster. Better yet, feel free to leave me a comment too while you're at it. That would definitely help a small channel like me grow. And clearly, if you know anything about me, I need all the help I can get. Mistake number one. Never build city walls, granaries, or water mills in the early game. Never. They're a complete waste of production. The only city wall you should be building is the one that you build once you progress to the mid game and you could put in the limes policy card to save yourself a hundred percent production in order to get the eureka you need for engineering to make it worthwhile and better yet make sure to chop this wall in whatever city you have magnus in at the time you unlock defensive tactics so get that policy card slotted in so it only holds you back for a single turn and doesn't cripple you any longer than that in the right situation a granary can be a decent idea however definitely not in the early game. The production cost just far outweighs the benefit until you get to the mid game where that production cost itself isn't such a significant amount anymore because you're just producing that much more faster. You're way better off to be cranking out settlers to expand fast, building up your army, or working on the districts that are going to be crucial to helping you win fast in the early game. The water mill in general, but especially especially in the early game, is a trash building. As in life, there are, however, usually exceptions to every rule. In domination games, you might want siege units quick to get yourself some crossbows, or if you're going down the cavalry tree and are trying to get to castles fast so you can upgrade your horsemen to coursers. For that matter, in every domination game, it can be nice to get construction fast so that in the civic tree, you get the boost to games and recreation in order to get yourself to the mercenary civic that much faster. In case you don't know, the reason that that's such a big deal is that you get the policy cards for the 50% discount on strategic resources, but more importantly, the card that lets you upgrade your troops for 50% less gold. The fastest way for you to get this done is to simply wait until you have Magnus established in whatever city you're going to chop your first army, but spend one chop to quickly cross the watermill off the list so you can get where you need to go that much faster. Mistake number two, underestimating the importance of scouts. I've seen different videos from people suggesting that you don't build scouts or you shouldn't build scouts. And I think for a new player, this is completely wrong. These units are crucial. This isn't just for new players though. Generally speaking, I won't start a game without at least one scout. However, for most new players, I'd suggest starting out with a double scout opening. Being aware of your surroundings is really important in case you have an aggressive neighbor in your area. And this is especially true when you're new to the game or new to higher difficulty levels and are com aren't completely comfortable defending yourself in the early game with next to Let's see fuck I read fuck that right up This is especially true when you're new to the game or new to higher difficulty levels and aren't completely comfortable defending yourself in the early game with next to nothing. Not to mention meeting other civilizations, discovering goody huts to give yourself a nice little boost here and there, and also discovering world wonders propels your error score and helps make it easier for you to get a golden age. Personally, I think getting golden ages for new players gives them real momentum heading into the classical era, and taking the time to build yourself two scouts to start your build order is definitely can it give you more of a head start towards achieving the victory condition you're chasing? Mistake number three. <laughs> the third mistake we're talking about is another one that a lot of people make in the early game and directly builds upon the last one we just covered. People seem to never take advantage of the survey card properly in order to get scouts promoted fast. So I'm gonna take a minute to walk you through this so that this mistake won't hold you back anymore. You wanna slot in the survey policy card as soon as you can because this is gonna allow you to upgrade your scouts quicker. You can either choose the Alpine promotion, which lets your scouts travel over hills without the movement penalty, or the ranger one, where they can do the same thing in jungles and forest tiles. Ideally, you want to get to your scouts both of these promotions so they can just fly through the map like crazy. If you're not using the survey card, you'd honestly be surprised just how quickly you can actually double upgrade your scouts. The ideal plan is to actually find barbarians, preferably barbarian scouts, to attack into. However, even if you find a barbarian warrior 
warrior or some other type of unit, it's very easy to just fortify your scout and let them hit you a couple times to get an upgrade. I mean, you can tank a slinger shot once or twice, get the upgrade you're looking for, and then get the fuck out of there. Once you have your first upgrade from the barbarians, you never want to touch them again if you can avoid it, because your experience gain is completely nerfed into the ground after you reach level 1. Once you get that first promotion from the barbarians, between goody huts, world wonders, and meeting your enemy sieves, it's definitely not hard to stack up a second promotion in no time flat. And I mean, once you do, your scouts will be fucking flying. And the information and error score you'll gain from starting to use this in your games is definitely unmatched as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you're a more experienced player, I'd say to use your judgment between opening up with one scout or two, depending on your preferences, the map itself, and your objectives for that game. Not to mention other factors, like if you're planning on getting a monument fast or an early settler and things like this. But as I said, for new players, I think just as a rule of thumb, you should start opening up all your games with two scouts first and be sure to chase those promotions. I mean, grab one promotion at the very least before you get scared and slot in your discipline card to deal with the barbarians. Going more than two scouts though is just completely unreasonable and you should definitely not do that. If you feel the urge to, please resist and seek medical intervention immediately. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. Mistake number four. The fourth mistake that I see people make is a lot of times you'll start building lots of military units in the very early game that you don't need. What you don't realize is that you're essentially crippling yourself doing this rather than going for things like settlers, builders, and districts faster, which will then snowball and help you win games faster. You might feel insecure and think you're setting yourself up for success when really you're kicking yourself in the nuts more or less. This is especially true for domination games when you're going for a swordsman rush. If you want to get one or two warriors before you unlock swordsmen, just to start working on getting them upgraded, dealing with barbarians, and using them to scout a little bit, sure. But if you're pre-building a whole bunch of warriors to upgrade them to swordsmen, rather than simply chopping out your swordsmen with Magnus and the Black Marketeer promotion, you're doing things wrong. Some people even claim that you'll save yourself six or seven turns per unit this way. That couldn't be further from the truth because you'll have a very limited amount of pre built warriors that you'll actually have the iron to upgrade with by the time you get Magnus that crucial promotion and can just chop yourself swordsman in one turn with an extra no iron needed to do it. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever that you shouldn't be saving the gold that you would use to upgrade your warriors to swordsman, by the way it's 60 bucks a pop, and be taking that gold and using it to put towards upgrading them from swordsman to man at arms. Not to mention the fact that all the extra iron you waste by not using the Black Marketeer promotion on Magnus is also iron that you then can't be selling to different enemy sieves on the map in order to be able to upgrade your units that much quicker to the next tiers past swordsmen and past archers into crossbowmen and past horsemen into coursers respectively. There's just no way whatsoever that this is a good approach that you should be taking. There are obvious exceptions to this rule. For instance, if you have an early game unit like the Aztecs and their Eagle Warrior, which clearly this wouldn't apply to because you definitely want to take advantage of them before upgrading to swordsmen so you don't miss your window with that unit's unique ability especially one as strong as being able to turn people into builders and this is definitely not to say that pre-building armies in domination games is a bad idea that isn't the case it just happens to be the case with swordsmen you should 100 percent be pre-building slingers to upgrade to archers in the range tree catapults to upgrade into trebuchets for siege units horsemen for coursers when it comes to light cav and last but certainly not least you better fucking be pre-building chariots to upgrade into knights mistake number five the fifth mistake I see people make all the time when I'm reading comments in the Civilization Community Facebook group I'm a member of, or when I'm interacting with the newer players in my community, is that they don't sell off their luxuries in the early game. You can't convince me otherwise that this is, is not a huge mistake. You want to be selling your luxuries off every single game you play in every type of game you're playing. Science, culture, especially domination, but hell, even in religious games, they all benefit from doing this 
this. You really don't need your luxuries to keep your cities ecstatic and happy until the mid game when your populations start getting higher. And then if you want to keep some luxuries back, sure, 100% I understand that. But in the early game, specifically, you should be selling them all the time as soon as you improve them to other civilizations in the game and you want to make sure that you're selling them for lump sums of gold, not for gold per turn unless you absolutely have no other choice. But even then, most times it's better just to wait until somebody in the game ends up making a bit of bulk gold and then take the shot there. The reason for this being is that you can then take those large sums of lump gold and do important things with it really quickly. You can upgrade troops really quickly in a domination game. You can buy more tiles to chop out the things you need in any type of game. There's just so many different things you can do, like straight up buying yourself a badly needed library, shrine, amphitheater, whatever. Hopefully you get it now. It's just you can do almost anything with gold, but do it faster. Fuck, you can do it now. And the best part is there's no reason not to do it. If you don't necessarily need the luxuries in the early game anyway as a rule of thumb, you should consistently be selling all of your excess luxuries all the time. However, once you get to a certain stage to keep your cities maintaining a good production boost, you wanna make sure you keep your base copies of the luxuries and only sell doubles. But this is definitely not the case at the very beginning of the game. At that point in the game, really at almost any point in the game for that matter, if you're not playing domination and are denounced by everybody and their third cousin, you should definitely be shopping for luxuries from other civs in the game because maintaining happy or better yet ecstatic cities is a powerful way to win your game a lot faster. Seeing as how you're still watching at this point in the video, I can tell that you're committed to getting better at Civ 6. This teaches you to win faster when you're playing mostly peaceful games like science and culture. Or if you're thinking about moving to the higher difficulty levels and want to know what to expect, this teaches you how to survive in the early game against aggressive DD AIs. I've rambled enough though, so I'm just going to shut up now and I'll see you in the next video.